has been seeing a lot more love in this group stage. I think uh, I think I said that to you earlier, right, Jaskal? Is yep. that Ancient Apparition and... Uh, and Lich, right? And Lich did yeah. not expect those heroes to be seeing as much love as they have. It is interesting to me because for a really long time, people just simply didn't pick it because the support heroes, like the position fours back then, were just way too strong and you, you couldn't really run it because you would just feed, basically. Yeah. But they added the increased movement speed to your Ice Vortex, so you can kind of maneuver around fights a little bit faster. You're not quite as easy to pick off as you used to be, and you offer a tremendous amount of team fight potential, and it's really hard to go high ground against AA, in addition to offering a ton of damage output through Chilling Touch, as long as you have some heroes who can utilize it. So I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that we, we see him coming back, but at the same time, he did get some buffs, and there's a lot of 2 one twos going on right now in lanes. And I think that in that situation, AA can still do all right. Yeah, that's uh, that Ice Vortex. I think level, it's like a 20% movement speed difference, right? Where you, you I think you get like 10% and then it slows oh, down it's, the enemy. At level one, yeah, but it's it's way more than that at max level. I don't know yeah, the yeah, exact for numbers. Sure. I'm just saying like it, it, during the laning phase, in order to get away from some of those four positions, like Clock, Spirit Break, or Night Stalker, and those sort yeah, of things. It's actually 30% difference Damn, at level 30 one. 30% difference. I did yeah. not think that that change was actually going to be that relevant. I was like, okay, that sounds okay, but you're you're still going to be stunned. You're still going to die, but... You're a is, race car. Yeah, and actually, you actually turn into such a dramatic difference in movement speed between the plus speed for you and the minus speed for your enemy that uh, Ancient Apparition's looking all right again. All yeah, right, and, and right. not to mention, like, the understated value that it adds to heroes like Earthshaker when you get... If you get the Vortex down, before you throw like an echo, for example. Uh -huh. It's a 30% damage increase, pretty much. It's it's a lot. It's very, very noticeable. So I'm I'm liking the hero a little bit here. Empire, they're, they're going for a different flavor than they did in the previous match. Didn't find too much success with the, the OD and the Phantom Lancer. But we'll see what they go for here. Probably gonna be needing to pick up a core in this phase, considering they, they have the Shaker and the AA only. Whereas TNC, they've opened up a similar way, just having the Naga Siren there, it, it's flexible. I'm sure that worst case, if they want to play it, uh, well, not worst case, but if they want to play it as support again, then they can. Otherwise, I'm sure Raven can play the hero too. What I like about the Ancient Apparition here is that it it seems like Song of Siren is going to be less likely to save some people that are initiated on, right? Just because yeah. you're going to get the, the boom damage of Earthshaker. And I think Team Empire in general are just going to play this game a lot faster than they did in game number one. They had a very slow lineup and, and their initiation, there wasn't like any quick burst damage. You think about their cores, OD and, and Phantom Lancer, they really got it. you know, they need good five seconds of just right clicking or lancing or whatever to be able to bring someone down. So I'd like to see them play uh, a lot faster and they're gonna get a clockwork, which is, is timing, is pretty quick, whether a four or three position. And I believe um, if you lock down Naga Siren, she can't pop Mirror Image, right? With the battery assault? Mm, I can't remember. It's close. I, know I think you can't pop Song. Yeah, you can't do Song. I think the Mirror Image cast animation is actually faster. Could be wrong mm. on that. I'm sure someone will tweet at us. Yeah, someone will let us know. Either that or we're all going to have to bear witness to it in the game. Yeah, that's the one thing. It's... It's so hard playing against Naga when you don't have these heroes that just kill the hero immediately, you know? Yeah. It's like, go in, splat. That The hero needs to just die at that point in time. But having the AA is nice, right? Because it's just basic synergy. Okay, I hook in, I throw the cogs, the AA blast comes in, it feels good. Because the hero inherently can't get out of cogs unless your mirror image literally moves you out. Mm. What do you do against this lineup so far? Because Team Empire has shown like, a lot of what their ideas are for this game they're looking for pretty quick damage they've got a lot of initiation do you do you tank up do you do you just actually fight team empire in the initiation battle because uh, the way i'm looking at this is team empire is going to look to run you over with heroes like kunkka and naga siren who really need some strong setup team empire just want to rush you down real quick it could be one of those situations where the the shoe is on the other foot whereas empire last game had the strong individual laners mm -hmm. you could last pick you know, some Necrophos, for example, he's an aura carrier, he buys pipe, he's really solid, self-sustaining, doesn't need a lot of help, can open up opportunities for Tim's if he's playing the Naga again to get some farm. 
I think that some some style like that where you're buying or you're you're buying items on the core that are team fight oriented. Anything that fits that I think would be solid. And the other path that you can take is their team right now at Empire is all magic. Right. So if you just get a hero that hits a peak with a BKB, then I think that's also a good choice. Obviously Sven is banned this time around. Even something like a life stealer, he destroys those heroes. Yeah, he like all of does. Them. So anything that either is BKB or anything that carries auras, I think would would be solid. The CK is a nice touch, though. Yeah, there's uh, very few heroes that match the definition of running you over better than Chaos Knight. Literally get trampled after a sea of horses. I'm liking Chaos Knight more and more. The more what? I see it, it, it is actually an amazing late game hero, too. Oh, god, yeah. If you have your Phantasm up and the enemy team is not prepared to deal with it, it doesn't matter how many tank items you have, you are just dead. It's and that level 25 cooldown reduction means that most of the time your Phantasm is up. Yeah. Where that where previous iterations of Chaos Knight, that was a huge detriment. Even if you did get the items late game, you were just such a timing based hero that enemy teams would just like kind of force fights on you and you'd be forced to use Phantasm more defensive setup and wouldn't really be able to take objectives. Even if you won the fight, you wouldn't be able to transition that into something greater. I do really like CK as well. I mean it's an obvious pairing with Ancient Apparition. That that combination goes way back. Like yeah. way back. So I'm I'm a fan as especially considering the, the Sven's band, you know that's that's yeah. probably the hero that you look at and you say this is the hero that owns CK. Timber is also a pretty solid choice, but it's dangerous. Yeah, because he's, yeah, he's not he's not like guaranteed to win that, right? Timber needs the armor before he starts getting hit by a phantasm mm -hmm. because the way that reactive works, if you're taking really small hits over time, it's great. But if you're just playing against like a TA for example or something that is blinks in and kills you in three hits, your active doesn't really do anything. Yeah. So you need to be very cognizant of that fact. You need to build at least one or two armor items in conjunction with your passive to make sure that you're going to be able to tank through that. But he is a hood buyer. He can buy Shivas, he can buy Lotus, which are, I think, both really good items for this game. There is, I think, a, a solid argument for Timber being good in this game, but I can also see where you're coming from, where there's no guarantees. Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot of mixed damage. Like, CK in, uh, on his own is enough to ha be enough physical damage to be like, oh, I actually need armor. Yeah, I think I think in order to have a good Timber Cell uh, game here, you actually have to run him safe lane um, and get the one-on-one -on -one matchup versus the Earthshaker or Clockwork. And because I don't think you can run off lane. I was talking to Blitz about this the the other day, and it just seems like uh, in laning phase, it's awful for, for Timbersaw. And once the Chaos Knight gets like Armlet and especially Heart, your Timbersaw just doesn't provide enough burst damage. Yes, he's facing a strength hero, and that should be good, but the problem is Chaos Knight gets so much strength and so much HP that the burst element of Timbersaw doesn't actually do enough, and Chaos Knight just ends up running over whether it's you or your allies, and you just can't stop him. Yeah, I guess there, there's also... You want, like, agonims. You want a lot of stuff that lets you just whittle them down over time. But that's not how CK works. Like, once the Phantasm is out, you're getting blown up. Yeah. Like, you are just going to explode. So I guess that's where you look to, like, the Naga Siren. You look to the, the Coco Rum from the boat to try to keep you up through mm -hmm. that. And you you definitely uh, All right. <laughs> definitely it's, called it. It's, 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 is it an aggro tri-lane? I mean, Naga's the core, right? Is it aggro tri-lane with Naga and safe lane timber saw? That's what I would hope. Because yeah. in an aggro tri lane, normally I look at these heroes like the the Naga and stuff, and I go, ah, it's not really that great. But at the same time, you're keeping the AA and the Shaker around, assuming it's going to be support Shaker. Yeah. Um, you know, either way. Ooh, that's a great pickup. Yeah, this this Empire draft is looking real scary. But TNC should have the the laning advantage if they do end up putting the Lich in the tri lane, and they they do that. I feel like that could be enough to kind of put things in their favor. By the way, am I the only one who sees that the the Naga Siren like being too Naga Siren? Oh yeah, that's some sort of bug that some people get. Yeah, I like, I do not. A get lot it, of the heroes are doubled, showing both the set and the non-set version for me right now. But yeah, I, I think the Lich last pick is still really strong because they they recognize, hey, if we win our lanes hard enough, they might not be able to recover from that, and it is going to be a core Naga, and this time around the the core Naga against these heroes. There's still a lot of danger for him, especially playing against a Storm and a CK. Like, yeah. there's so much damage coming out from Empire. Maybe they don't do an aggro tri lane. Maybe they do um, Timbersaw Lich. 
Um, pull the lane back, and once you get to level two with ice armor, it might be enough. Right, if you have that initial armor for the timber saw, I think he might be able to do okay. Because, you know, that initial, it's the first, like, two or three hits that really, really other timber saw, especially with the reality rift. But if you have frost armor on you already, maybe, maybe it's okay. I, I guess we'll find out one way or the other. I think yeah. the big thing for me personally is trying to keep the supports in lane as long as you can. Because if you're playing a Lich and you can force the enemy supports to exist in your lane, then you are just getting an advantage by being alive. Right. Because you can just sacrifice the creeps over and over and over again. And eventually you'll, you'll get the, the EXP lead and the, the safe laner won't be getting as much farm. And I think that's kind of what TNC are shooting for here. I mean, obviously when you pick a Lich, that's what you want. But more than anything... Just try to force a reaction on the Empire. Don't let the CK get a free lane. Don't let him get to that critical mass where every single one of your heroes just kind of flops over. <laughs> you know how I feel? Like, I was trying to think about like what that feeling is. You know how the feeling when you're the four position, you smoke up and you push out and you run into the other four position? You know I realize it's kind of like when you run into your ex. You know, it's like that awkward <laughs> like, oh, hey. You know, and you know, like what you were doing, just kind of like you just kind of end up stopping from when you're just like, I... Hot. Let's just go our separate ways. Yeah. You kind of want to ask how they're doing, but at the same time, you kind of don't. Yeah, you just want to get out of there. Yeah, I feel that. All right. A re-smoke by TNC. Two smokes popped before the horn blows. See if TNC get really good first blood here. This would be sick. FN's going to pick up the bounty rune, run straight to his lane, and not expect this torrent. Straight into a bunch of right clicks. Cuckoo's not even leveling. He does like, I, I don't even necessarily need Shatter Strike to use it to help get the killing blow. First blood on a Storm Spirit. Going to be late to the lane as well. It's going to help Cuckoo go straight into, uh, I don't know, what do you, you don't really get fast bottle here, right? You just get more null talismans? Yeah, double null seems to be the standard. Because it just allows you to harass and get the CS that much more. And you're not expending a ton of mana early anyways. I mean, right. You're kind of just throwing out a dagger here and there. Just going for the last hits. Should be pretty pretty safe bet just to grab the second null and then go on from there. He might have also got a salve too. Okay, there we go. And this particular lane, it's also nice to get the full wand going because you are against a storm. This spams a lot of his remnants out. Uh, bottom lane is actually going to be Lich Naga. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Naga starts with a lot of armor. And, uh, oh, Seven is going to get uh, caught here. Fisher block into a bolt. The torrent's going to slow them down, so he might actually get out of here. Resolution does not have Reality Rift up, so he does actually live somehow. Great torrent from Tim. Yeah, it's a full-on try lane. I do like this. We talked a little bit about it. The, the Lich being able to just soak the farm and give your, your try lane an experience advantage, I think, is more than enough reason to put this lane itself together and just kind of hope that Sam H can do well in the, the 1v1 against the Clockwork. And it's not just him, right? Like, Cuckoo has the advantage in the 1v1 over Storm Spirit as well. Yeah, of course. So, locking down these supports, maybe still winning the lane. They could actually win all three of their lanes with this setup. That's this. the hope, because they're going to need to against the CK. Yeah, that's true. And even if they win all of the lanes, to be completely honest with you, I think that Empire has that kind of team where, you know, you get a good stun into an AA blast, and you could be have a farm. You could have a farm advantage. You still die. Yeah. All right, they have a little bit more kill potential. You could see them kind of chipping away at Raven. I think they they are thinking about maybe we can make a go. The reality rift, cold feet, stun. And then uh, Fisher in there as well. He may just have enough burst damage if they could bring just one of these heroes low enough. While our 1v1 in the top lane. Gostick is actually doing really well for himself at the beginning. He started off with so many denies. Yeah, he is owning. 7-11 compared to 9-1 and one of the Timbersaw. Eventually, Timbersaw will take over this laning phase, but uh, it's the first one or two levels that you can do the most in this 1v1, no matter who you are, whether it's Leech Commander or... Timbersaw or uh, Clockwork, Sand King, any of those heroes, like you have to really put the pressure on the Timbersaw through CS and harassment. First couple of levels, Gostic certainly did that. I think this is one of the rare melee matchups where if the clock plays super well, like right now he's going to catch him, he doesn't have uh, chain. Yeah, he's going to take so much damage from this. 
don't think he dies. Battery Assault is going to be taken out soon, but he finished him off with a flare. Nice. He just picked up his level four. That is sick. Getting a kill on a Timbers on a 1v1 is fantastic. Sam H makes a Got huge as well. blunder. Resolution gets a last auto. That's, uh, that's a vac then. He just got like a 400 range auto. Oh, Raven. Scared away by the cold feet. He was trying to get some uh, vengeance for his dying support. Tried to kill Maposhka, but doesn't have the damage to do so. And that's one of those things where the, the top lane, like Sam H, wasn't respecting the level 2 battery. Maybe yeah. just thinking he could tank through it. He's still not gotten a single point in the timber chain either. Even after that death, he's like, nah. I'm just not going to make that same mistake. Haystrun at bottom lane could be prime opportunity for somebody to do something with it. Storm Spirit has uh, started his full jungle pact, as Storm Spirit don't want to do. Around level 4 or 5, especially in a tough 1v1, they just kind of forfeit the lane. To be honest, though, you know, FN gets first blooded, gives the gold to Cuckoo, which makes you think that, oh god, that's a queen versus a storm. This is going to be awful for him, right? He's still pretty even on CS. He was actually winning at one point, though he might be dead again. Tim's roaming around here, has the X. Oh, he doesn't see him? Okay, there we go. Spots him now. He's going to be able to get the X torrent. Is it really going to be enough, though, with 1437? They do have the hasted Quap making her way in with the Blink ready to go, so if they can just get the damage out, Quap can finish the job. Blinks forward, gets the magic damage there. Good kill for TNC. And all the Naga Siren has to do is just play a little back in the bottom lane. Doesn't die to the tri lane. Let's his supports have the freedom movement to get a kill successfully for Cuckoo. Yeah, that was a very fortuitous ruin. I'm not sure they killed him without the haste. And they might, he might have even killed Tim's. He was taking a lot of damage. Yeah. Fully committing for that. This poor Storm, dude. This is just suffering. Like, he's four and a half right now. To be fair, though, it is FN's turn, right? He got all the loving. True. They just shut out Cuckoo's Razor in the mid lane. Now it's uh, TNC's turn to put the pressure on mid. You just you just don't know how it feels, man. You're not a mid player. That's true. Yeah, you just don't know how it feels to have that two support roaming on you the whole time, and you're just praying to God that your other heroes are doing stuff. You're right. I don't know what it feels like to win three heroes, Strascal. Okay, I mean, <laughs> in the mid I know, lane, I know, I know, I know. You got, like, heroes <laughs> behind your tier one. You're getting it from all angles. You're like, what's happening right now? <laughs> it feels a whole lot worse having those uh, two heroes going to mid. It's all right, though. Raven is still... He's not farming, like, super well. I'm kind of curious as to when they're going to decide to rotate Sam H out of the safe lane. Maybe once he gets six. Maybe that's when he just TPs bottom. Because I don't think you can really keep Raven down here for that much longer and, and justify it, because he really does need to pick up his farm a bit. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of uh, rotating around, Gostic has a boost. He's got his level six. They are going to be able to get the X-Torrent onto Roger. Stuck in the river with Cuckoo on his way. And it's a dead dog. He's, he's had a kind of a rough couple of games, Roger. He's been on the shaker, and he's just been, like, getting picked off a lot. His blink timings have not really been the greatest, but... And not too many really impactful Echo Slams even after he could... Yeah. Well, hopefully he'll be able to make some kind of turnaround in this match, because he, he has such a good supporting cast of heroes. There is so much kill potential on Empire. Tim's going for the X here. Back in. He gets some nuke damage onto him. Just brings the resolution down to half, but now they actually make the go onto Raven with all the TPs coming in. Raven without a level 6 of his own. He's not able to stop that one. Ooh, hook shot. Here's a little bit too far to the right. Ends up hitting the illusion rather than uh, 1437 who was searching for. Would have been a nice bonus kill, but at the end of the day, it's just a lich. It's yeah. not like you really don't care too much. If you, if you miss that. Ooh, they can burst hero. FN down. He may be level 6, but if they somehow get the torrent on him without using the X, that's not going to happen. Or at least I don't think so. They see Tim's. They have the vision right here. In the meantime, though, they're taking some pressure on their top tower. So they're going to have to move around a little bit. Cuckoo's even creep cutting. suppose he's feeling pretty confident that their, their support combination can't really kill Queen. Yeah, they really can't. Unless they somehow force him to blink, and then they hit the hook shot afterwards. But of course, Gostick doesn't have the hook shot. For that miss in bottom lane. Now Sam H shows up in this bottom lane. The uh, Chaos Knight 
with three levels of reactive armor plus the lich armor it's currently sitting at level one it's gonna be tough then the next thing he threw him bottom lane. Ooh, Cuckoo almost finished off FN, but now he's going to be cold feeded to the spot, especially with the help of the Fisher. FN actually turns around, tries to get some damage. He's going to go for the kill, and he gets it too. Nice, brave play from FN, turning around with practically no HP to kill the enemy mid. As he watches his ancient apparition die. Now, Tim's is running forward, hoping to be able to catch something with a torrent. Not going to find it, though. Now that was a really nice save. The storm not dying there is huge. Again, like the CS, a lot of what FN has is jungle creeps because he was kind of forced out of his lane. But if he's able to stay, like relatively good net worth in comparison to the queen, given the start that he had, that is impressive. They're gonna make a goal here on Sam H. They clone the full thing from Resolution here. They do the block off of the cold feet, moves to the right, gets a little bit of distance, but it looks like they should have locked down Gostik for this mob with a hook shot just to make sure. There's an opportunity for him to slip away with the timber chain. I wonder if hooking there was necessary. You know what I mean? Like instead yeah, of I just maybe hooking for 1437 or Tim's, maybe that would have been like a, just a free kill. Because that, that is a really tanky clockwork. He's got treads and a, a stout shield. That's enough to even tower dive into. Effin being chased away by Cuckoo. He has such a lead that he can stand and fight the Storm Spirit. Even. Uh even at this level, where usually Storm Tier reaches a nice little peak around level 9. But the case, Queen of Pain still too big for him to handle with Treads, double nulls. That matchup is Sam H again. Going for it, and got it. Going, going, gone. Sam H's Timber Saw dies again. Really good job slowing down this Timber Saw, who had a great 1v1 matchup, uh, at least when it came to farming, but. He died that one time, now he's died two more times in the bottom lane since then. There should be a Timber Saw looking at Bloodstone pretty quickly, but instead, TNC, or sorry, Empire made kind of all the right moves to uh, keep that at bay. This might be one of those games where you abandon the idea of Bloodstone and just get like a hood or something, and then, you know, build stuff incrementally that makes you tankier so you can live through that. Because if you have to be in that lane and allow Raven to take the safe lane from you, you got to be able to live. If he's just going down there and feeding over and over, it's it's going to get real bad. And this is without even the Ancient Apparition having level 6. Like, there's no Ice Blast. He was only level 4 when they killed him the last time. Cuckoo. Going to be jumped on here by FN. Just using a little bit of that uh, Fountain Regen as he TPs in. They are going to be able to get a Torrent onto FN. Cuckoo does have a Sonic Wave. So if FN's not careful, could get caught in the blast and burst down. I'd love to see Cuckoo actually rotate down to that bottom lane with the Timber Saws being gone on all the time, but he's still hunting FN. Go! Throws out the Sonic Wave, but it's just not far enough. Hookshot misses. Cuckoo could have died there if he'd actually been put by the Hookshot. And that would have been a monster turn around. But uh, fortunately for FN and fortunately for Cuckoo, they both end up living. Just overestimating the range of his ult a little bit too much. Gonna see a cold feet here on the same age. Don't think anything's gonna happen from it. And top, Raven is trying to get some farm. It'll be a little while, I think, before Raven's really able to influence the game in any any meaningful way. Raven is halfway to his relic to build his radiance, but he may find that he's a lot farther away without Song of the Siren. And rotation from Resolution can be quite effective in shutting him down. Oh. Roger just makes sure the bounce of the Chain Frost is going to land, oh. but it's not enough damage. 10 HP. Now he's super slow, so 1437 has a chance of still being able to run him down, but Resolution is too big of a threat. So back over to mid lane. Cuckoo has a cold feed on him, forced to blink. I love how aggressive he plays this mid lane as the queen. Like yeah. he's constantly just like so far in their face. They can't ignore it. Like they have to send heroes here. And by doing so, sure. Oh, Raven. nice read. He gets in a position to, to get some damage on him, but Poshka, he can't make a commitment here. They actually a top lane manage to get a kill, but Cuckoo does get the Ancient Apparition finally. But Lich ends up getting caught on the Bounty Rune. That's the power of these four positions, right? Bounty Runes are so important for supports that you just position yourself to contest those, and sometimes you're not just granted a Bounty Rune, but also a free kill against a, an opposing support. It's the strength of a Clockwork against a Lich and a Kunkka. His yeah. position, you know, five and four is... It's so easy to kill them. Well, Sam H followed some of your advice you know, for uh, build up cloak. I'm not sure. It depends, I guess. You know how much more farm he gets. He might choose to finish it, or he might just choose to go for bloodstone if he doesn't die for a little while. Yeah. 
Because the hero does farm pretty fast. You could really use that shell against this Ancient Apparition who's now level 6. You could easily see Resolution actually killing him with uh, the help of an Ice Blast. We've got Gostic on the side here. See the vision. Pretty good for the Dire Sight. We don't actually know about these heroes on the side. They are going to be able to get the Ice Blast on the same age. Bring him low with Cold Feet, locking him down. Cuckoo's here, doesn't get the Sonic Wave off, but it may not matter. Gostic is in there, but he's not going to be re dealing nearly enough damage to be able to finish off Cuckoo unless they get the stun out for the Chaos Knight. The last second, Gostic is able to kill the Queen of Pain. So TNC end up losing two there. That could have been just a one for one trade off, but Resolution with his dying breath throws out the Chaos Bolt to strike the Queen of Pain down. That was a nice play there. It was a, uh, I want to say a one second stun. Yeah, it was one second, but obviously that means it deals the max amount of damage. So he just got chunked super hard. And like you were saying, just the combination of the AA plus the CK still kills. Oshka has some help, but the Fisher Block doesn't actually lock Tim's in. They still manage to get the Cold Feet root, so they can kill him, I think, with the Enchant Totem Blast and a couple of right clicks. Bring him down. 11 to 6, Empire up. Yeah, they almost have double the kills, but actually not that much of a net worth lead. Only sitting at about 15, or actually, sorry, 750 maybe. Uh, about a 1800 experience lead, though. I think it's actually ideal for TNC to have the net worth this close. You know, when you have the Naga who's not really coming to team fights, you're kind of hoping that the other four heroes can kind of pick up the slack as Roger yeah. helps get the kill there on Theban once again. Hookshot committed. But this is a this is a situation that I think the TNC aren't feeling too bad about being behind in kills. I mean, look at Empire's lineup. They are built to kill. So the fact that they haven't actually managed to keep TNC from getting what they need is highly important. Well, I mean, they've kept Sam H down, but Cuckoo and uh, Raven is beginning to make that comeback. But Cuckoo mostly is, uh, I think, big threat on the 6k easily kill a lot of these supports pushing back fn again he's really trying to take this tier one tower and he might just be able to force it here the siege wagon and the natural tankiness take the shots from the tower thanks to veil of discord claims that mid tower and that may finally open up queen of pain's movements a little bit more he's been spending a lot more of his time mid than i expected out of the queen of pain well, I think it's because the bottom tier one's already dead. Yeah. Like, that's where you want to go, right? If you're mid, True. you just want to you want TP down there, kill the core, kill the tower. So just being in this spot, I think he's prioritizing because he knows that it's really hard for Empire to kill him. They have to commit three heroes minimum. So because of that, he can just sit there freely and just pressure nonstop. I think he, he's played it fairly optimal. Now, Storm Spirit's been forced away from the lane quite a bit, but he's still sitting top of the network chart thanks to some pretty efficient jungling and a couple, or at least one, opportune kill. About to finish up his Bloodstone. I've really been feeling FN this game. He's done a, an amazing job at kind of cutting his losses, knowing when he has to go to the jungle, being able to very aptly know where and when he can be there. Just very impressive stuff. I mean, every once in a while you get caught by like that random gank after you get your bounty rune at level one. Feels yeah. kind of bad, but he's done a phenomenal job at staying relevant in net worth. Smoke, but not the hero they really wanted with this smoke. They'll take it anyway, obviously. Poshka's Ancient Apparition dies. They still hold on to a smoked Cuckoo, though, so he's going to push forward into the enemy jungle unseen. But I don't think he's going to be seeing much of anything either, unless he gostic. Well, they do have some vision in the area if they were to walk a little bit further to the right. I'm not entirely sure if they saw Sam H in 1437, but just seeing Tim's in the mid lane is enough to make Resolution feel a bit unsafe. Or can we see the Queen of Pain there. Phantasm's gonna go a complete whiff there. Now the Chain Frost on Resolution actually fortunately boasted over to Gostic, but it's forcing over to Miposhka and FN. They get off the big nuke from Cuckoo. Almost brings down two heroes, man, to finish off the Chaos Knight. They look for Roger now, but FN's here, and he's got a lot of damage out on the Cuckoo, so he's forced to retreat with a blink. That actually was a whole lot messier than uh, I expected from TNC. Losing Sam H there, but uh, they still managed to pick up a very important kill in the Chaos Knight, especially since he simply can't recover. All these deaths, Chaos Knight is not a good farmer.
Definitely not, and he, he skipped the Midas too. That's something also very important to note. Like CK, he's one of those heroes where if you're crushing the early game, then you can kind of justify going past the Midas, but as you said, he, he lacks flash farm capabilities. So without the Midas, his net worth is very dependent on being able to consistently win fights and take objectives off of Phantasm. And that's just not really happening that much right now for Empire. So it's something that they need to be worried about. On the flip side, they do have a Storm who now has a completed Bloodstone. And sure, it's it's a couple of minutes late, but he's still the highest net worth in the game. They need the read, but it's a bit too late. Resolution's already been caught by the x in combination with Sam H here. They can maybe kill Resolution. He's going to try and do a little bit of armlet toggling, but there's no way, not with Cuckoo joining them. So again, TNC just putting the pressure on Team Empire, getting these kills on cores, and every single time, Raven's on the other side of the map, peacefully farming away. Sometimes the lane, sometimes the jungle, but either way, it's now going to be a Radiance at around 20 minutes. Yeah, he's got it in about 50 gold. One more, one more creep. That is a really good thing for TNC, even though the net worth is still only 1k in their favor. It's about who holds the gold on each team. Mm -hmm. And I think that you, you hit the nail on the head when you voiced your concern about the CK because the longer the game goes, if this hero doesn't have some kind of item to help him farm and you're not winning fights against a Naga of all heroes, you are going to have a very hard time pressuring. Raven throwing his illusions forward. He's not going to be the one showing in lane. So this position of Maposhka and Gostik finding the kills. Meanwhile, TNC have set up a, a trap of sorts. Cuckoo's going to be the one pushing forward. He's got a bunch of heroes smoked around him. Nobody from Team Empire's taking the bait, though. They're thinking purely about the side lanes right now. Gostik. It's going to run into 1437 with the help of the Timber Saw. It's going to be a pretty easy kill on Gostik. At least he managed to pick up the Lich. FN bouncing around. A long jump by him. Wastes a lot of mana. Gostik's going to try and TP away and gets axed. Oh. Okay, I guess he's still dead. Yeah. That was uh, a combination of spells both X and Song and Siren used to stop that TP. Yeah, the, the Song actually disjointed the Sonic Wave damage. Oh. So he, yeah, he didn't get hit by Cuckoo's ult. But yeah. I mean, if it kills him, it kills him. Whatever. Abilities used. Tim's too far out of position there. Ends up getting hit in the face by a, a storm spirit and a, a double damage for a shaker. Yeah. Yeah, they got to start being a little bit more careful uh, uh, as TNC against the storm spirit. They've got great control of this game. They've done everything right so far. I think it's just this one little point where storm spirit has picked up his bloodstone and the chaos knight is still relatively strong despite how much they've killed him. It's just the natural strength of the hero to peek about now, right now that they just got to make sure they don't get picked off repetitively and they should still be able to, to weather this storm. Now this is something that's going to be really annoying for Empire 2 is his Frost Armor. With the Phantasm popped, it's just like they just don't really do any damage to the building. Yeah, especially with all the heroes around it as well. It's got that extra armor all around. Finally, it does end up going down. Sam H turns around the field scepter on FN, but he's going to be pulled back by Resolution. But here comes the Chain Frost. See if they can get lucky on the bounces. Resolution's taking a lot of damage, especially with Boat almost finishing him off. He does have that armlet to keep on toggling. Where's the burst damage from TNT? They just don't have it. Sonic Wave's not up. So Tim's going to be the one gone on by FN. Roger joins him, throws out the Echo Sam to guarantee the kill. FN sitting at 15 Bloodstone charges and still has a decent amount of mana. So they can jump on Raven here. Raven just entered in. He's instantly going to die, not even needing the extra damage from FN, just Maposhka and Gostik kills the wandering Naga Siren. FN moves forward for more, but the Orchid on Cuckoo will prevent FN from being able to pull Cuckoo back for the kill. Now that was a really, really nice play there in the clockwork. Just getting that hook shot, Gostik securing the kill on a, I would say probably the highest priority hero at this stage in the game. Getting that just kind of gifted to them. That's that's a breath of life that they, they desperately needed. Now it's a 16 charge bloodstone on FN. Yeah. He's getting up there. He's making his way towards the, the Yules. Uh, the Yules is great, obviously, against Kanka. And it's good to be able to uh, stop the Ensnare from hitting. Maybe we got the, the Orchid from... Kuku yeah, the Orchid as well, as well on Cuckoo, yeah. It's, it's just nice to have the, the multiple ways of dispelling yourself. So maybe later on, you know, he goes back for Lincoln's. It's also a Storm favorite, and then it'll be really hard to, to deal with him. Man, that fight, and, and combined with this regen rune, FN is actually just clear on skipping over what was supposed to be a really good timing for Cuckoo. Have the Orchid, 
against the Bloodstone Storm Spirit with no Yules. Like, normally yeah. this is a time where you can make such a huge impact on the Storm's uh, future farm in this game, right? You kill him a couple times, shut down those Bloodstone charges. Uh, it's just like a, a, oftentimes a free kill. But FN, like, he went from Bloodstone, no Yules, to almost straight up Yule Scepter after that fight and a little bit of farming. One or two good team fights, man. That's all it takes. Storm's one of those heroes where, you know, you, you've known Will for a very long time. You understand how the hero <laughs> works. I don't need to explain it to you. <laughs> I've heard enough about Storm. You know, I've never... I played Storm Spirit a little bit in Dota 1. I don't think I played it at all in Dota 2, but I still feel like I know the hero inside and out just being around. Yeah, makes sense. Gostic gonna be caught by the X into the torrent. He did. Well, found him. <laughs> It's one of those, I'm going to scout for my team because I feel pretty tanky. You know, you got your force after you play them. Oh, they're jumping on a Cuckoo, but he didn't grab him. Oh, no, FN. If you pull them back, that would have been an Ice Blast and a ton of burst damage. But instead, it's FN who's going to be in trouble as he's used his Yule Scepter. He just commits the Bloodstone to Nye. So back down to 10 for him. And Roger trying to make the jump for the Storm Spirit, trying to help provide a little assistance. But instead, he's just the extra death. And Raven caught two. Huge pickup now. They've got the stuns. I don't see either one of these heroes surviving, especially with the Orchid onto Resolution. He's the big tanky one, but this Amplified damage burst is too much. So TNC just brought this game back real quickly. Like, it, it turned into kind of a questionable situation after that nasty mid-fight, but they bounce right back into control of this game for 25 minutes. Not getting the pull-off on the Queen ended up just straight-up killing FN. That's pretty unfortunate. He's going to fall away here. He uses a decent amount of mana. But what happened during the fight, he doesn't get the pull, so Cuckoo blinks to the river. And then because he gets X and Torrented, he feels like he has to Yules himself. Otherwise, he's going to eat a full combo. But the issue with popping the Yules before the Orchid is cast is that Cuckoo is able to blink back in and Orchid him as soon as he hits the ground from his Yules. And then he just, you know, he's dead. With no Storm, there's no fight. Yeah. And uh, the rest of the, the fight is, as they say, history. And a big turnaround here for TNC. I have to wonder, like, if we could just go back in time and slightly change the Storm Spirit's movement, have him, you know, zip forward just a little bit farther. Oh, Cuckoo would have been dead. He like, would have been completely dead. And without a Queen of Pain, I think TNC just falls over. Yeah, that, but that's the, the beauty of Dota, right? It's like one tiny thing. One tiny thing and, like, the butterfly effect of it. This bottom lane resolution is going to be caught again here. Butterfly flaps its wings, and a Chaos Knight dies. Wow, he well, actually fantasm? got the Phantasm, got the Armor Toggle. Still going to have a problem, though. And Age is here. But it is enough time for the reinforcements. They get some counter kills. They kill one, two, and a third. Lich is the last to fall. So two cores and a, or one core and two supports for Team Empire. And some much needed refreshments on that Bloodstone. Well, we take those. <laughs> we definitely yeah, we take those. It looked Empire. a little bit weird at first that he popped Phantasm, but the reality is it bought him enough time to get another armor toggle. Keeps him alive for a few seconds. FN and, and Roger are there to back him up, get the kills. He sets him up, they knock him down. Good stuff. Yeah, if, he, if they had actually been there a second earlier, maybe the Chaos Knight could have even lived. The true darkest timeline there for TNC, but... Empire 21-17, to 17, they've kept this gold lead in the wheelhouse. It's never drifted past uh, 1,500 one way or the other. Same kind of goes for experience, but again, it goes back to what you were talking about, right? Where is the farm? What heroes have picked up a lot of the gold? And here for Raven, he's got 11K. He's pretty much not been a part of most of the fights. He got that extra catch on two heroes, but his impact has been very minimal. And he's only going to get bigger here. Meanwhile, Empire, they... They are peeking out. They've hit their mid-game stride. They've got the Blink Dagger on the Earthshaker. He's seen his Echo Slams. Resolution, you're not really going to get much stronger than this given his farm. We're not going to have that late-game Chaos Knight unless this game takes a sudden right turn. And Resolution's able to find a, a whole lot of farm off of killing people. So it's pretty much on FN, the Storm Spirit, to keep this game going for them as it goes later. I feel like he has the tools, though. If he gets BKB, which I guess he's buying next, yeah, he's got the Ogre Club already. If he's able to get that in the fights, he can still have a huge influence. He can kill, like, both of the supports, I feel. Uh -huh. Like, the Lich has phase boost, no real save items. Same with the Kunkka. I mean, he'll have Glimmer soonish. ish uh, Maybe that'll be a bit of a deterrent for the Storm. But they, they have the tools necessary still to take fights and, and to kill the heroes 
that they need to kill. That's true. Before Manta, they, they have the Orchid against the Naga Siren. And even afterwards, he makes the jump onto the Naga Siren, you know, gets the pull, the Orchid, blah, blah, blah. He's going to pop the Manta. Oh, Boom. They... Earthshaker jumps in and Echo Slams. Yeah, yeah. They don't, they don't have Orchid, though. The storm, oh, you're right, right. Yeah, the Stormwind right. heals. Yeah, the Stormwind... Because Cuckoo has a, an Orchid. Yeah, I was, was Orchid was bouncing in my Don't worry. Somewhere. Last game I said Illusion gem works, and it doesn't. I'm a fool. It all it happens, you know. Sometimes you're just in the moment, and you're like, "Oh, this is so good," and then you're like, "Wait a minute." What's going on? That really is the problem with Dota analysis, isn't it? Is that like there are so many factors going on at once that it's hard to keep keep track of in your head. Yeah. I feel like when you're just chilling out watching Dota games, there's there's just a whole lot more that you can see. Yeah, it's it's actually very different uh, doing live commentary as opposed to just watching the game. Yeah. But either way, still TNC. Biding their time, waiting for Raven to get to that crazy, unkillable Naga mode that we... Well, maybe not everyone wants to see it, but at the very least a TNC fan would want to see it. Especially with Manta almost there. And the BKB is done in FN, so this is another really strong timing. 10 second BKB on Storm opens up a lot of opportunities for Empire to potentially just go for a fight and, and maybe even look at Roche. I guess that's one thing we haven't really touched on a whole lot because usually when you have a team with Naga, you don't really kill Roche that often, unless you're like owning. And the same thing with Empire, because CK, he hits Roshan pretty well, but nobody else does on his team. No, like everyone does very little physical damage. And they don't have any items for it either. No yeah, it's, it's a tricky situation to try to get that thing in a game like this, when you have great initiation from both teams, and there's a team fight that is off the chain for Empire. Like Echo, AA Blast, Hook Shots, and, and Phantasms. Tim's is doing the hide in the trees and push wave with Torrent. Dude, this is this is something that I hope that a lot of players take away from the tournament is how often they see pro players sitting in the trees and not TPing away. Yeah. Like that, just do that. It doesn't matter if you wait like a minute or two minutes or whatever because you're just waiting for information on the map before you want to show yourself again. And by TPing back, you make it real hard to influence the map. Hey, even if the, the heroes do actually rotate Raven, it's going to be caught inside the cogs. Oh, he is dead. They're going to be able to keep going too. FN, he's got the mana to find some extra kills. So 1437 may be the next target, but a will place Torrent will slow him down. FN didn't want to make another jump with that much mana. Getting into the kind of dangerous zone where if you jump a little bit too far forward, you might not have enough mana to get back. So he decides against it still, though. A big kill. They're actually going to go straight for top lane. Echo Slam. Lay down Cuckoo. They're just trying to get the chains done out long enough to pull back. But no, the BKB. Oh, Resolution. He TP before FN. So FN's TP took forever. And now bottom lane. Gostic's actually trying to grab 1437, but. He may not be able to make it out. Chain Frost is off the TP. Not Ooh. there in time. And Ice Blast nails the lid, so he still dies. Man, that was... He was mid-animation. It's painful stuff. Well, I guess the the silver lining, again, is the more time that they spend chasing around these other heroes, the, the more time Raven's going to have. Like, he did just die. But it's really difficult when you don't have any of your illusions around if the Clockwork catches you out, because you definitely cannot song in yeah. Battery. Seen it multiple times, he just gets stuck and he's, he's unable to to get himself out. And in, in that sense, you got to give a lot of credit to Gostic. He's found the Naga more than you would expect. Yeah, for sure. Like, if you kill the Naga two or three times with a clockwork, you're just like, you're high-fiving yourself. You're like, hell yeah, this yeah. is my game. I mean, he, like, Naga Siren's very rarely shown up on map, and most of the time it's after TNC had taken some four-man team fight that's created a lot of space. And yet, some of these team fights. I'd also say, like, uh, Raven's misplayed the Naga Siren a little bit. Obviously, he was going to have a pretty natural rough start, but say, like, that mid lane engagement where he just kind of, like, walked in and just got hook shot up. That was a pretty rough one. FN makes his initiation onto Tim's, but scared away as the defensive four staffs come in. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I'm going to have to hold on here. Tim's is going to be uh, jumped on here. Sam H is also potentially jumped on. So you just ignore the Chain Frost with their golden heroes and keep on going. The Sonic Wave on the lower hand does manage to kill the Earthshaker, so no big jump in from him. The Song of Siren actually keeps these heroes in place. and manages to get the Oregon on Storm Fear, forces out the Old Scepter, jump away, but he's out of mana now. So if the Chaos Knight survives, the, the uh, Storm Spirit will not. 
as he has to commit bloodstone suicide once again. Uh, that was a very chaotic fight. Nice being able to pick off the Earthshaker before he can do much. Really close. Oh, he actually had the Shadow Blade money, so next time around, unless there's a sentry in the area, he might be able to get his uh, his Echo off just that much easier. But going back to before we saw that fight break out and just, you know, Raven's play on Naga, mm -hmm. I feel like it might be a hero that he doesn't play as much as other cores. Yeah. I mean, obviously, your, your captain's not going to pick you a hero that you can't play. But there are definitely some heroes where you are way more comfortable than others, even if you would consider yourself passable on something. Because there's been some points where his positioning just seemed a little bit off, like in middle lane, for example, when he just kind of walked in. Yeah. You know, stuff like that typically doesn't happen to the more experienced Naga players. Yeah, especially since his, I, I think his team has played very well for the Naga sector. Yeah. You know, I think they've, they've done such a great job creating space for him and everything else that um, he's definitely had his opportunity to make the comeback and make the quick plays. Another Echo Slam jump. This time FN is here to be able to get the chains done. But oh no, a Glimmer Cape and no counter vision. A BKB activated and a Shrine is there too for Cuckoo. They have an opportunity for a turnaround now. The X pull back here. Never mind. I thought the X was on Gaustic, but it was actually on the Storm Shirt, so he'll just Yule Scepter himself. Good stuff. Not, uh, not losing any of the Bloodstone charges. Still got a nine second BKB forcing Cuckoo's own BKB. But I guess they did commit Echo as well. And the big thing here is the Empire, like they're keeping this game close to net worth and everything, but they're just not getting the objectives. And that's because the Naga Siren is coming online. He's always keeping these lanes pretty well pushed. They don't have the greatest wave play here. You've got what, Earthshaker who kind of burst down the illusions, Storm Spirit. It's kind of okay, but not multiple illusions. They don't really have the greatest way to deal with these split pushers. That's kind of the, the main reason why I was kind of emphasizing the importance of Empire's lineup and just getting a lot done with yeah. a CK. Because when push comes to shove, if you have to split up all the time as Empire, your team feels a lot weaker. You really want to be together, you know, you want that echo into the AA blast, you want the clockwork to hook in into an AA blast, or, you know, Storm or CK jumping. It's, it's just not really going to get any easier in that regard and dealing with Raven and, and how many illusions he's sending from, from lane to lane. So the the other concern too, and this kind of goes hand in hand with what we're saying, is your ability to kill Roshan also directly affects your ability to be able to go high ground. Like how do you hope to push into TNC if you can't get an Aegis? Yeah. And it takes a lot of time for Empire to kill that. So in order to take it, they pretty much need to win a fight. I'm trying to to look at this chaos now. I'm kind of curious if Resolution can get to 25. Right, anyway, he's got the cooldown reduction. He starts getting bigger and bigger. Can he actually, in some ways, meet the Naga Siren? Right, when it comes to the, the split pushing they're doing and make those high ground commitments with the Phantasm. Can they actually win this late game against the Naga Siren? Because those two cores, the fact that Chaos Knight scales a lot better than he used to in the late game, and the fact that Storm here has always been good and will continue to be so, can they actually win 50 minutes plus? What do you think, Draskal? Mm, I think it's possible, but it's... it's. But well, what's the percentage, let's say? Because, you know, everything's possible, but... I'd say it's like maybe 70-30 in favor of TNC. Mm, okay. Because the way I see it is, when you're playing a cooldown based lineup against something like a Naga, which has consistent pressure, right. you don't get a lot of windows, you know what I mean? You get maybe like a handful of them throughout the entire game to, to really make your impact. Particularly since all three of their cores are really good at Mo Posh goes down. Hello. Yeah, Goodbye. he just got splatted. But yeah, that's, that's kind of how I feel because there is certainly high ground potential in a CK with six items. Yeah. He's going to pop Phantasm, walk up to the high ground. That tower is going to explode. Like, it's just dead. So, with that being said, if they get the opportunity, they can definitely win. It's just about, do TNC give them the chance? Are they going to let up on the lane pressure? Are they going to get caught? Are they going to go in for Roshan? And are Empire going to win some, some team fight that gives them breathing room? Because as it stands right now, TNC seem to be more happy just idly dealing with the lanes as they're pushed out, having Raven somewhere else on the map doing his own thing, pushing the lanes. And then whenever a fight breaks out, Raven is pretty much just somewhere else causing pressure, and, and Cuckoo and the rest of the squad at TNC are the ones really kind of taking the brunt of it. Yeah, and they've also got some very independent cores besides that Augustine, right? Both Queen of Pain and Timbersaw are great for pushing out waves as well. 
So it seems very difficult for Empire to be able to match not just the Naga Siren, but the other heroes, the other cores as well in, in that kind of split pushing pressure game. Well, speaking of pressure, looks like Empire going for some aggressive posturing here, kind of grouping up around Roach. Raven's going to scout it out too, just to make sure. But this, this is kind of getting, it's getting rough. Like Empire still have a couple of chances to to really turn this one around, and a lot of it's also going to be on the back of F that now does have the Orchid as well. Caustic sees the Lich, and it's going to be FN who makes the jump forward. Does tank the Orchid. Oh, Hookshot going to be blocked up there. Mule Scepter going to dodge some of that, especially the Orchid. Caustic actually forced to use his BKB. Didn't even know he had one. Uh, he TNC. just fought it. They completely disengage and now prepare for a re-engage, especially to Caustic misses his force staff. He ended up on the cliff. That's not where you want to be. And now he's stuck. His TP's not going to make it out. Cuckoo just moves on to the next one. He's like, you t you guys take that one. I'm going to look for more. And he might just be able to find one, too. And Finn's not really target. He's got tons of mana. And the rest of Empire are far enough away. They're not going to get caught either. So a very awkward engagement there from Team Empire. I think they just maybe tried a bit too hard for that initiation. You know, they were sitting mid, and they kind of saw some opportunities with their Shadow Blade Earthshaker. They, they saw the Kunk up, but they didn't make that go. And finally, they, with the Rocket Flare, they spotted something, but... So I, I kind of understand the sense of urgency that Empire are feeling right now. Yeah. Oh god, we're playing against Naga, the game's going later, Octarine's finished on Raven. You really want to try to force the issue as hard as you can. But this is kind of why we go back to the whole 70-30. That whole situation pretty much only arises because they feel their lanes being pushed in. Like, look at top and bottom, right? Both past the river. Right. Mid's going to go past the river here in a couple of seconds once uh, Sam H finishes it off. This is why they're feeling the urgency. Just so people can, like, fully understand, like, the, the extent of what Naga does to your team. And why people, you know, they haven't played against Naga, like, the whole year. Like, no one was playing this hero. <laughs> and then TI rolls around. Bam, Naga Siren. Oh, Roger just found something, but no! He stopped this. Oh, he stopped the Saga Siren just in time with the Fisher throw the combo stun. That's Holy big. cow. I thought Roger really screwed the pooch there when he Shadow Bladed and ended up walking past the Naga Siren as, you know, there was a little bit of vision. Can they rush there. off this? I think they can. Yeah. Resolution has heart. Resolution is definitely big enough for you. This is the window they much. needed right here. This is, this is the time where Empire can look at it and say, okay, no Naga. If TNC try to fight this 4v5, this could be really, really bad for them. It depends on how yeah. the fight obviously rolls out. If they can get the combo into the pit, maybe. Can get lands of spells. They either make this, they either rectify that pick off of the Naga Siren, who make it so much worse with this attempted fight. Hookshot actually runs into the Earth Shaker. Looks like they're just going to be able to catch uh, Tim's. Uh, TNC realized this is a completely failed initiation. Roger moves forward, almost catches, almost catches the Timber Saw. Not good enough, though. So, an age is picked up. FN is level 25 as well, so he's got that little bit of extra stun timer for locking down the Queen of Pain or that Naga Siren. He can fearlessly dive into the base. You said it, Draskal. This is their time. This is their window. They have everything. They have everything up. Phantasm didn't get lucky, but it doesn't really matter too much. I think he's still going to be able to crush this tier. Not as fast as you would expect. That ice armor, dude. Yeah, that ice armor is doing a lot of work. Extra mine armor, plus the fact that they're all getting slowed on their attack speed. A chain frost just going to be casually thrown out on FN. It's bounced over to the illusions. Actually, keeps on bouncing on the Gothic. Does a good amount of damage. And Sam H realized this is his time to catch somebody. He gets the old scepter on to Maposhka. Pops a BKB of his own here. And he just looks to be able to make sure that Maposhka can't get off a good ice blast. Holding on to it for a while. Four staff away, but he ends up dying before he can get it off. Cuckoo. Oh, forced away a little bit there. Tim's on the front line. Is actually going to combo it up here. Resolution goes for him. Glimmer Cape again saving these heroes, but they finally do see him thanks to a dust. FN is completely down and out on mana, so they can finish off his first life, but can they actually deal with the resolution during this short window while FN is gone? They're trying to, but resolution still stays alive, and now FN's back. Full HP, full mana. Raven goes for resolution, still trying to lock him down with the help of Sam H, who's actually out of mana with the BKB popped on FN. Maybe can just kill and get some help. Makes the long jump away. TP's out. He's good, but couldn't save resolution. TNC do end up winning that fight in the end. They took down the Aegis. They took down some of the other supporting heroes of Empire, even if they couldn't kill Storm Spirit twice. 
I still think at the end of the day, getting the tier 3 is still a very big thing for Empire. Even though you could look at the golden experience and say, okay, yeah, TNC, walk away from that with the victory. But just opening up the possibility to kill shrines. Doesn't sound big, but anything that inhibits Raven's mobility in the game, stopping him from having extra points to teleport to, yeah, that's a really big deal against Naga. Because a lot of the time, if you don't want to TP directly to lane, say you don't see anybody on the map, you don't want to TP to lane. Sometimes if you have your shrines up, you just TP there. Then you send your illusions out, and that lets you get across the map in a more safe manner. But taking that away from them is also a good thing. Zinviz, and he was thinking about going for Poposhka. He still kind of is. He's got this working. He's got a good amount of burst damage. Okay, doesn't even attempt it. He just kind of shows himself, maybe forces some sort of reaction, but keeps himself safe first and foremost because he's almost got the type of ice, and that is going to help so much. Yeah, he is just massive in regards to farm. Keeping up with the Naga Siren. And having the level 25, too, is definitely not going to hurt. I mean, he, he's not really itemized around the 25. BKB. Ooh, BKB goes off before the stun can land. Resolution is now orchid. Now, he does have a BKB as well, as well as Phantasm. So he wants to fly. He's just waiting for the initiation. They got it. They got it onto Cuckoo. FN managed to get the lockdown. The Song of Siren goes off with the BKB still activated by Resolution. Can finish him off with a big time crit for the Echo Saber. Now he jumps for more. Raven's the target. Looks to bring him down. Should be able to get it, too, especially with that Fisher block from Roger. He tries a little shenanigans. It's actually pretty fast. He's making long jumps. FN, surely you can find him, and they will find him. And D. Gostic gets him with a rocket. Two big cores down from TNC, one of which has no buyback. Empire just found themselves in another sick timing, especially with a shrine up. They don't even have to go back to base for the full heal. They can just march straight towards TNC's buildings. That is a little bit of an interesting play coming in from TNC. Maybe they were feeling a bit more confident because they, they took the actual fight with the Aegis and won. But they were also fighting it starting at their own tier 3 tower, which no longer is there. So because of the fact that Raven doesn't have buyout and he made like the choice to go with his team aggressively across the map like that, I mean, maybe they made the call, you know, like, let's go fight or, or something like that. But it's it's going to come back to hurt them pretty badly here. Yeah, it certainly is. Oh, hook shot in. Followed up with Got the, the ice back. blast, but... Of course, now the buyback with Queen of Pain is big. Tim's really needs to catch somebody here. Somebody that's not Resolution, though. Resolution trying to get the three second stun onto Tim's. Gets the torrent on Resolution still, keeping the X as well. Just trying to keep him in place to see if TNC can cobble together some sort of pickoff opportunity or fortuitous team fight while they're still close to the base, but that's not the case. Empire do manage to back out and go for the shrines. It's the safe play. You already know that. You kill Cuckoo one more time, and he doesn't have buyback, that's that's potentially a Rex, you know? You walk down that lane, even without Phantasm at this point, Resolution's huge. He's got so much health. He's gone from being, like, sizably behind the Naga, like, roughly half the net worth at one point in the game, to only being around 2k behind. And this is a hero with no flash farming capability whatsoever. This is just sheerly gold generated through team fights and objectives. Raven's beginning to uh, top out a little bit, too. He just picked up the Diffuse Blade. He's got one more big item. I think he kind of wants Butterfly in this situation. Yeah, I think so, too. You, just you already to... have... Uh... Oh, never mind. I didn't think he had SCD. I don't know, Cap. He I had actually... it queued up. I think he had it queued up at one point in time. I'm, uh, I'm just going to say that happened. We're talking about the same hero, right? Uh, yeah, Chaos Knight, right? right? No, see, I was talking about Naga oh. yeah, See, that's why I was like, wait a minute, what? Whoa, Tim's. Hello, goodbye. Sam H with his BKB misses the chain. We've got to make sure he hits the second one, though. I don't know where he's going to go, but he's got to get out of there. A uh, long jump. They are going to be able to find Sam H just before the chain actually latches. Rogers over here with a long time jump, but oh no, they actually get spotted. So Sam H does manage to go down. The second initiation is still there. Roger managed to get the blink onto Cuckoo still, despite getting forced away no by that Orchid. No buyback on him, and 1437 is also going to get caught. No hiding in the trees here, my friend. FN picks that one up. 19 Bloodstone charges. Only the Naga Siren still alive. Fortunately, the Naga Siren's in a great position to try and force some of the Empire heroes back. So he's about to take down Tier 3 with a wealthy there's, share of creeps. There's no TP on FN. He's got a ball to the side shop to buy one. And this so, is uh, as much as you could ask from your Naga Siren. You're making that many people TP home. Yeah. 
Like, this should have pretty easily been a Rax, given the way the team fight went, knowing that Cuckoo doesn't have buyback. But now Sam H is going to be alive pretty much as Resolution gets there. Sure, he'll be able to Phantasm, but I don't think he can really do this on his own. He needs at least one other person. I guess he has FN in the bottom lane. He won't have, like, he, he pops Phantasm. He won't have any mana after that. That's kind of hard, right? You won't have mana for Manta. Yeah, they probably just back. Reality Rift. That fight should have been a huge opening. But Raven's play, like being in the off lane, getting all that damage in the tier three, forcing multiple, I think he forced three TPs yeah. by himself. It was such a big creep wave and, and uh, the illusions as well. The double siege wag, that's really what forced a lot of Empire back. So 25 seconds till the Queen of Pain is back up. Chaos Knight is going to move forward. Use the Phantasm to deal with this mid lane of Rax. Now TNC. They can wait 20 seconds and give up this lane of Rax for their Queen of Pain, or they can try and find some sort of opening by themselves. First half away from the Lich, they are going to be able to still jump in, though. FN's here, but the Glimmer Cape again, saving so many of these heroes from the Storm Spirit's clutches. Nice! Chain forward with the Yules. That might have just caught Maposhka. He's going to die. And now this is their opportunity. They saw a resolution. They're going to be able to go for him. He still has BKB, but here comes Roger. He sees the opening. He goes straight for Cuckoo, takes out the Lich as well. A big play, but the Song of Siren just saved Cuckoo. He turns around with the BKB, gets the big heal off his fell damage, and Cuckoo stays alive thanks to Raven. Roger has really turned it up here. This support Earthshaker is making some big plays where even if that one didn't turn out to full fruition, it was the best he could have done. Yeah, that was so close. It was just Raven reacting. Perfect uh, perfect song, keeping him alive, getting the extra heal like you mentioned from the Sonic Wave and making sure that the game could have just ended if Cuckoo died there. Yeah. Because he didn't have buyback, obviously. I think it's still on. Yeah, it's cooled down for three and a half minutes, so it's still quite a ways away from being able to do that and still waiting on 1437 to revive. Maybe they want to try to go for their own smoke play, knowing that Phantasm is going to be down for a little while, about 50 seconds. Because it's, it's kind of getting to a stage where Raven's farm is not it's not ahead enough. You know, a lot of the time when you look at a, a Naga's net worth or these other heroes that have flash farming capabilities, they're usually like way ahead of everybody else, yeah. just blasting. And this time it's it's really not happening. Hey, he's actually behind the Storm Spirit still. Yeah, FN is just, he has owned this game. Roshan round two. Very easy rush for them. Not really any contention coming out from TNC. It's very difficult for them to do this if they don't have the Naga. I guess he's in the area. But. With FN's build, he's actually going to be pretty susceptible to this uh, Scythe of Ice that Cuckoo's going for. They actually moving forward by TNC still. Not going to be able to get this push on. They do have the lane pushing, though. Like, the middle lane, top and bottom, are all going in TNC's favor at the moment. Raven probably just sends himself towards bottom, waits for the TP. That lane's already open. So if he does force multiple TPs back again like he was able to do previously, it'll buy TNC a little bit more time. Probably the, the optimal thing to do in this situation. Does he have... Yeah, he definitely has buyback. Okay. And he is making his way towards the butterfly. He's going to have those crazy tanky illusions. Still another two minutes for Cuckoo on his buyback. So gotta oh, be yeah. a bit careful, but... He actually TP'd home. Oh, Raven. Yeah, that's interesting. Normally you'd be TPing up to top or mid at this point. Well, I can understand not TPing to top, but I kind of feel like he needs to play it a bit risky at this point. Yeah, at least TP to the... Oh, I guess the top shrine's gone. But, you know, like, what are the creep waves that's farther back? And just get in a position for your illusions. Yeah, or just stay in, stay bottom and just keep making illusions, you know? Like, yeah, that's just, true, too. You can cut mid and top from bottom because you can just walk the illusions, you know, to where the creep wave is going to spawn and just have them hold position. Glad they got a jam on TNT. This combination of split pushing and then also being able to eliminate all the vision of Team Empire yeah, I think that's the, the biggest way that they really secure wins here. Uh, Roger tries to make a go here on the Kunkka, but Storm Spirit's actually so far away to follow that up. Well, this is the situation that TNC don't really want because their Naga is stuck in base. So yeah. for anyone who's kind of inexperienced with how Naga Siren works, you, you typically don't want to be in your base ever 
because you are the hero who is killing the creeps and pushing the lanes and creating pressure on the map. By being stuck in your base like that, it makes it impossible for you to do what you want. Shivas, and they are going to be able to stop for the chain away. Sam H is in some serious trouble. They try and give him the Glimmer Cape, but it may not be enough to save him. That fence actually pretty low from that Sonic Wave. And the damage coming out from the Chakra Room, they do manage to take down that range tracks, but Resolution caught inside the Ensnare with a Chain Frost bouncing around, actually hits over to FN, so it takes down that Aegis. Resolution down to half HP as well with the boat following in. The defensive four staff gets him away. Raven's getting a lot of damage on the back line too, thanks to this Radiant significant of the site. On to FN, down to half HP, forced out the BKB usage there. Gostic stuck inside of his own car. Step but Roger comes oh. in with a big echo slam. Takes out three from TNC. And now it's just up to Cuckoo to see if he can fight back the rest while Raven makes his way back to the base after once again threatening the back line. He's trying to make sure that Resolution can't get that hard heal, but he's here now with half HP. FN being gone on. Cuckoo tries to finish him off. He gets him. The poison is enough. Raven continuing to kite resolution all around the block. And what the hell is Roger doing? I mean, he's been a baller, but damn. Shadowblading up there with 100 HP, he gives zero fucks. I can respect that. You know, he's got that health talent, man. He's not a, he's not about that enchant life. 600 HP, Oh yeah, go. baby, 600. You were right. I said 500. You were correct, sir. I thought Tusk had the highest health. I'm pretty sure it is the highest. Yes, it definitely is. They made it absurdly high because because that hero was bad, and then they decided, terrible. let's okay, we'll give him a uh, let's do 30 experience. Okay, no, 35. All right, 40. 40. Maybe now people will pick him. Yeah, the, he's he's got one of the best in the game though on the shaker as well. That that hero's talents are just insanely good. I never really get uh, the the bounce logic. Whatever I see these uh, supports that get like the level 25 buff talent. Oh yeah, and I'm just like I don't I don't think anybody cares. It's I think it's because when they do those kind of changes, it's more about they want the hero to be played in a different way. Mm, like maybe yeah. you know like instead of core naga, you play support naga, stuff like that. Yeah, maybe we can see core tusk one day. One glorious day, we'll see the one punch tusk. So when you when you go like tusk mid, right, and yeah. you're playing like a pub game with your friends or whatever, you can buy like phase boots and just go right solar crest. You pretty much one shot any hero without a thousand HP. They just instantly die because 40 damage at level 10 plus phase. It's just bonkers. Coo -coo. Coo. It's 39 to 29 right now. A 10k gold lead by Empire. That really isn't much. 55 minutes of the game. Roger again positioning himself for another Shadow Blade initiation. The Echo Slam ready to go. They caught the real Raven here. But oh, oh no, Roger! He missed the Echo Slam this time around. Does manage to hit a three man Fisher, but it's just not enough for the team to follow up. Empire need to back up. Held in disgrace, Moposhka actually gets the Glimmer Cape off. Can he survive through the Orchid? Barely. He's okay. Gostic gets another hook shot farther away from TNC. And they will retreat without too much damage done. In fact, they're even pushing in bottom lane. Roger's going to be caught there. Dual Scepter protecting himself. The Blink is up, but it's just too fast with the burn damage of the Radiance. He does manage to Shadow Blade himself away, though, from TNC. The Ensnare doesn't latch on. Empire is beginning to hem TNC inside their base and hitting them from multiple sides. Even with that failed initiation, they still got a win out of that with all the damage from the Tier 3. I wonder what... Do you think he was close enough to get hit by Radiance? I, I guess so. I, I didn't click He on looked him. pretty far away. I don't know. That was strange. I mean, obviously, sometimes you just... You think you're hitting, you don't, you know. It happens. But yeah, they, they, being able to get away from that situation without losing a ton is a godsend. Because it could have very easily been punished. By TNC. Absolutely. And you were right about the MKB choice too on uh, Rezo. He's got it now. Yeah. Against the Naga with the Radiance and the Butterfly, if you don't have MKB, you just like, you'd never hit him. Yeah. He does have that cooldown reduction, so there is a downtime of like 42 seconds. It's actually 50%, so 42 seconds downtime. Fantastic. Never uses it. Empire's FN does make it back base okay so hear me out right yeah say the game lasts another like 20 25 minutes uh-huh do you ever buy an octarine just to swap in for when you hit phantasm and then put back your ac because that's what resolution is going for next yes absolutely yeah it's definitely value right because you're getting the extra 25 percent cooldown reduction yeah and in this game i think like there are going to be situations where you use phantasm but you aren't in the middle of the fight right you know it's like one of those like pushing phantasm situations Especially if you can use it with your Vanta as well. Because I always think about 
you know, like refresh around CK, but it costs so much mana. Yeah, like you can't even if you need like a Scotty if you're gonna buy a refresher. Uh, smoke up, push through, TNC run into resolution here, but he's a little bit far and he does have the BKB, but he gets Scythe the Vice before he can use it. Now he's going to be working it up. FN trying to run interference here. The hook shot also lands, and oh, Cogs into two. That's a nice setup here. They're going to be able to blow up Tins with resolution, popping his Phantasm. So Raven goes ahead and calls it quits. Use the Song of Siren. See if Storm, he doesn't have the mana to catch anybody. So they lose their two supports, but Phantasm was used. So Empire, are they going to have to move really fast to take advantage of this timing? Or they're just not going to be able to control the map enough. They actually almost got Sammy. She still gets down, though. Well, the lanes aren't too bad right now. If yeah. you look at the map, Empire are really only concerned too much about uh, the top lane. But even that one's pushing out. So I would say that this particular timing is still pretty strong. They finished off that tier 3 at bottom. I don't know if they just did that or... No, FN balled in. It had like one hit left earlier. Oh, okay. Like that's why he had so little mana for a while. Because he balled in and then balled all the way back to like the roof to get, the, to get away. Resolution pops his Manta and starts focusing on the melee racks. He's Without so tanky. Damnable uh, Frost Armor. Uh, ice Blast coming in. Not going to try and pull anybody to it. Just focus on the racks now. They have the Echo Slam. They're trying to lock down this Naga Siren. He's down to half HP. They do manage to get him inside the Cogs as well. So it's hard for him to be able to get out of this one. Pops Manta, but it's still going to end up with the Naga Siren. Creamed all over the floor. FN pushed away. Chakram not able to catch him. So he's able to get out as well. That is actually a very clean escape for Team Empire, considering what they just gained. They killed the Naga Siren, forced the buyback, took the melee racks. Roger, he may be a casualty of war or not. Sneaky. Gem's still sitting in base. And, and by the way, they didn't even oh, lose a hero. He no. got denied. Oh, Roger oh. Roger, Enchant denied him. Like what? He, he enchanted and hit him on the way out and then blinked. Damn, Roger. So sick. Man, that, that is one hell of a caster's curse. You know, we were talking about how Roger's kind of having some rough games. Dude, I think secretly but. that every single player booth has just like a direct comm link to what we're saying. And then they just get like, all right, I'm going to show these stupid casters. I'm going to get in there. Maybe, maybe it's like, maybe it's not the full comms. Maybe it's just like a Valve employee sitting there. He just holds up a flashcard. Caster called you bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, or just like a little red light goes off. I could see that. Negative things are being said about you. Turn your game up. Dude, if that's all it takes, all we got to do is flame everyone. It'll be the best. You're all ever. garbage. <laughs> You're lucky Draskal and I aren't in this, in this game. Oh, God. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> All right, TNC, they may have been forced into the buyback, but that does not shy them away from aggressive positioning here. They are actually going into high ground themselves. They're saying, damn it, I'm not going to wait inside Dude, my base there on anymore. this queen, too, and a double damage. Lincoln's going to prop that uh, reality rift, and he's going to be able to blink himself away, but Roger's moving forward. Roger. Roger the Dodger. Oh, get inside the vice. This time around, Cuckoo's going to be pulled back. Gets off his BKB. Blinks a little distance away. Turns around. Still can't really turn and fully fight, though. Sam is right in the middle of this with his BKB, but Resolution ignores him. Goes for the back line. Managed to pick up the Lich. Now that the BKB is down on the Sam H, they can go from with the side device, but Raven again goes for the Song of Siren. Play. Nice try. And uh, Sam H is going to be the one con. So this time, they couldn't get all their cores out. They do have the buyback, though, on him, so. Jesus, they are just, what, one range racks, one melee racks away from Megas? Yeah, even then, it's like they have a Timber and a Naga with a Queen level 25 having a Mjolnir. It's not like Megas ends the game. Yeah. It's just going to be really rough for TNC to continually push lanes after the fact. Even in this situation, being like a full set of racks down and an extra melee with a range top, it's still okay because the Naga Siren Illusions are, are so powerful at this point that creeps just don't do anything to them. Like, they, they just kill the wave anyway. But I'm kind of wondering, since the Naga Siren is, is pretty much at the most farm point that you can get to, what the next step is. Do you just buy, like, a Moon Shard for your Queen of Pain? I'm not sure, but he may not have the opportunity to be able to get any items. Down to half HP and stuck inside the cocks. He's oh. dead. Echo Slam goes out. They double back. buyback, but it's going to be a 4 versus 5 from here. Maposhka's going to end up dying to the Sonic Wave plus that, but they're actually going straight for Megas. And then it's bounced over to the uh, melee racks up in top lane. He's going to be forced away by Cuckoos. Back over to Resolution. He's battling it out. Tries to go for 1437. Force snaps himself into Cox. He'll be okay for now. Resolution starts backing himself away. Gossick is full on committed. He knows he's probably dead, so that's okay. He's just buying his. He's done. They're going to be able to go for the melee rack still. They're so focused on Gostic that they start banging 
landing on that melee rax, forcing out the glyph. See if they actually go back in here. They have the physical, the physical damage to be able to pop it here. Especially with the Phantasm being blown by Resolution. They also catch Tim's. He has a buyback though, but it doesn't matter. They go for the melee Rax. Megas is going to be the death of TNC for sure. They can't let Resolutions finish this one off, so they use the Scythe of Ice. Here comes the control. Roger comes in with a couple of swipes as well. FN, he pops his BKB to ensure the melee Rax goes down. BKB, TP out. Resolution gets the escape. They don't even kill anything for TNC. Roger also makes his Blink TP out, and TNC are left empty handed and emptied homed. There's no barracks is left. Megas are going to be running down, and TNC may have just lost the rat game with the Naga Siren. Man, this game got so out of control so fast. The CK just managed to find the right fights, the opportunities, knows when to pop the Phantasm, when they need to commit to the fights. A lot of this game, I think, revolved around the decision making of sending Raven across the map with his team to Whoop. take fights. Good All hope. right, go straight for Lich. See if you could take that free kill. Meanwhile, Cuckoo. Who's the one that I thought Gossu was going to go for? This isn't actually the case here. Oh, Cuckoo actually got landed. Ice Blast. Oh, no, he's on the other side of the cliff. That's going to slow down Resolution's damage. FN does make the long jump in. Mantra grabs the Lich, grabs the, the Tim's Kunkka as well. Both supports down with no buyback. So TNC going to have to stand against Megas, against five with only three cores. They go for FN. They down a little bit low. Managed to make a long jump away. Raven tries to chase him down, but it's just not going to happen. So instead, he goes from a Poshka. He still has hopes to try and grab FN. It's his only real hope of being able to win this game is kill that damnable Storm Spirit, but he just can't quite get to him. Again, he's locked inside the cogs. Gostic is making Raven just constantly sit and wait. Take a timeout. They do manage to hold, in fact, might even be able to get more as Maposhka does end up going down. But who really gives a damn? It's two heroes. Team Empire still have the Mega Creep, still have all the time in the world. It's TNC. The onus on them to try and actually push out these waves and make something of some substance happen. This is pretty much their only shot with no buybacks. But the problem is they, they can't know that for sure, I guess. Or wait, did Gossip buy back for the fight in the base? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Okay, so they, they know that the they don't have buyback, but getting outside of the base now is going to be a task. This is one of the situations where it's the hardest to come back from, but at the same time, you really don't want to tap out, yeah. right? You, you want to try to, to play it out to the bitter end and see if there's, you know, somehow, some way, maybe Empire throw their bodies at you a little bit too reckless and you, you're able to get couple of key picks and then you can maybe turn it around. That being said, Empire making sure that they are playing it as safe as humanly possible from their dominant position is going for the Roche. It's Aegis for FN, Cheese for Resolution once again. Once they group up, it could be the last push here. They just have no item changes on TNC. You see uh, a Mjolnir being attempted by the Naga Siren. He still doesn't actually have the uh, level 25 just yet. The Queen of Pain is working towards that Bloodthorn, but they've just lost too many fights. Nothing's going to change for these fights. It all just comes down to maybe some sort of blunder of execution for Team Empire, but as you said, they played it safe so far. They've gotten the Aegis and the Cheese, and they continue to play it safe as they want to finish up uh, apparently a couple items. I see a Silver Edge being uh, queued up for Roger here. That would put him with no buyback, but he doesn't have it anyway for four minutes, so... This has definitely been a, a very entertaining game, though, to say the least. A lot of fighting, a lot of positioning for map control, playing against a Naga Siren. It's always really tense when you're the team who's kind of on the clock to try to deal with that hero. Yeah. And Empire managed to put themselves in such a dominant position against TNC, who a lot of people Hello. were expecting big things from as well. That's Tim's, Sentry. <laughs> he's playing it dumb. He's like, I don't see you. I don't know what you're talking about. They don't, uh, Sentry, I didn't place one. They don't want to go on that hero, man. <laughs> they really don't. That hero's so tanky. I think they're really hoping that they would catch Roger. Yeah, Roger is definitely... He's redeemed himself without question this game. Absolutely. He is... Uh, he's also quite tanky, though. Look at him. 3,460 HP with a BKD and a Yule Scepter. I mean, let's not forget he also hits for about 1,000 damage with a chant. Yeah. God, that just seems so silly when Look you think at this. Look at these smoke wraps coming in from the side. Another sentry being laid up with a cop, the Naga Siren. They're just looking to burst him down, and there's no interruption here from TNC. They try and go for a force staff. Echo Slam, everything being thrown out just to be able to bring Raven down. That's all that matters. Well, maybe it's not. A buyback is up there for the Naga Siren. And a lot of these heroes, they take a lot of damage from the Chain Frost. They're going to go for Roger first. Yule Scepter being used by him. Sonic Wave is going to clip a little bit more damage onto him. Should be able to finish him off just before the Fisher lands.
No buyback from him. Two and a half minutes, he's actually down two minutes as well. But TNC are still going to be stuck inside their base. A kill on an Earthshaker is just not enough. Well, the kill on the hero, if it forces Empire off their side of the map, they may at the very least be able to push out the lanes. Yeah. And if they can get like one or two lanes past the river, then you're opening up opportunities to deal structural damage. And I think that's the way that they get back into the game is like, get a pick here and there. You know the Empire committed a ton when they were trying to commit for the Megas. And if you can manage to find a pick and another pick and maybe like one good fight, you could potentially get the lanes in such a manner that you want them to be able to... What? Yeah, he was TPing. <laughs> you don't see that very often? <laughs> uh, not offensively. Yeah, you yeah, use yeah. it defensively all the time. Jesus. Then you give me a heart attack. In that position, definitely <laughs> something that is not seen too much, but it makes sense. You know, you just kill the creeps, keep the pressure on. Yeah. Make TNC just sit in their base. And it, as much as they're trying to push out the waves, it's just really tough. Megas are called Megas for a reason. You know what the worst thing uh, about this, the Mega versus Mega, it's even worse than it was before because now you've got the rune control for Empire, the double rune. The double runes yeah. is so tough to beat in the late game because every single one of them is like hugely influential. Sometimes an invis rune, like we saw earlier on Resolution, could have actually gotten him a perfect opening. Uh, surprise jump onto TNC. The arcane rune is obviously huge, like a 65 second. It's a 23 second downtime on Phantasm right there. You can just throw it. You can pop it, just throw it at uh, some tier fours if you wanted to. Have his whole team just back up and just play with the illusions. Well, Empire just biding their time, waiting for the lanes to slowly push in. It's probably the safest way to go about it, just making sure that all the lanes are in the base and then you kind of go in together with the creeps yeah. and just slowly kind of suffocate them. Phantasm here being popped. At least TNT are uh, keeping themselves entertained while they wait for the push from Team Empire. I don't know if it's just because I don't speak Russian, but the, all their voice lines just sound so much cooler than ours. Oh, yeah. It's the Chaos Knight with the Mega Creeps pushing further and further. Take some of those support buildings. Bye bye, shrines. Now this is something else that's really good to do when you're playing against a team that is Megan, is taking out all the rest of the buildings in the base, because then the creeps are basically, they're just walking straight towards the tier fours. Yeah. And there's nothing in between to kind of stop them. Just slowly chipping away at a, whatever is left of TNC's base at this point. 50 to 35, this is the last stand from TNC against Megas, against a five-man of Team Empire that has routinely beat them out in team fights. They still have hopes. If they can actually win this game somehow and make this a 2-0, they would solidify their top four in group stage a little bit further. They do not want to get into that lower bracket at the end of this group stage. Here comes the initiation, a small little torrent, and a little bit of harassment damage onto Resolution can easily be undone with the heart. And the tier four down to half HP. TNC really do push this back if they want to keep some of these towers alive. Gostic throws out a hook shot, misses, but the cold feet does manage to latch on to damage. But ooh, FN gets blown up at the side of the fight. Looks like he tried to make his jump and immediately gets shut down. He's going to be up in just 20 seconds time, but a Team Empire needs to try and escape in the meantime. TNC pushing forward. They may have lost Sam H, but he immediately bought back. They need to catch something out of this, and Roger is going to be their next target. The Ensnare up with the Bloodborne. Make short work of him. He's down for 90 seconds. No buyback either, but progression has been made by Team Empire. A Tier 4 was knocked down. The other one at half HP. I mean, it seems like, you know, you lose two heroes for a tower, it doesn't really seem that worth it, but when the enemy team is under this kind of pressure from creeps, the tier fours are the hardest towers basically to kill, and they do the most damage. So if your throne is exposed and you're mega, that's one of those, like, one in a hundred wins. You know what I mean? Like, if you're mega, sometimes maybe, like, five out of a hundred games you can win because the tier four towers are, like, that buffer because you're eventually going to have to leave the base if you want to win the game. And if you leave the base and you have no tier fours, it just leaves the opportunity for heroes with boots of travel to just TP to side lanes and end the game. But if you have tier fours, it's harder to do that. So getting that one tier four down is a really big step into securing the win for Empire.
if we're gonna look on a very, very obscure bright side here, Draskal. At least when 1437 gets his Aghanim Scepter on Lich, the Mega Creeps will allow the Chain Frost to stick around for a very long time. I mean, at this point, I guess you don't <laughs> you don't sell Midas, but you're kind of thinking about it, right? You're like, man, if I just had my Aghanims. Yeah. I mean, this one's definitely been the, the longest one of the day for us, but... You gotta respect TNCs. Dude, he's got he's got to get to that level 25 with the Midas though. The experience is important. Plus 35 frost armor structure armor. Yeah, that's insane actually. 35 armor. My Plus God. 35. Yeah, it like more than doubles the tower armor. The the thing is, I always thought that talent was weird though, uh -huh. because if you get to 25 on a lich, shouldn't the game kind of already be over? Yeah, one way or the other. And if you're the one who's winning the game, why would you ever want that? Uh-huh. That's like a purely defensive niche. And if you're losing the game, the extra armor is not going to save you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> example A, this situation. Hey, guys, our tower has got a million armor. Oh, uh, jump in. They're going to try and jump on a sandwich. They know they blew his buyback last time around. They're not going to be able to get him, though. But maybe Cuckoo ends up dying. Jesus, he had to back away from Resolution's Illusions there. So they force a lot of TNC back to the fountain. Force another buyback from the Lich. TNC. Been holding on for a devilishly long time against these mega creeps. Oh, I like what Resolution did here. He actually opted to go for the butterfly. And jump forward on a Sam Mage with the Ice Blast landing. He managed to get off the BKB though, so no Echo Slam is going to be able to stop him. Tim's though in some serious trouble. Resolution just keeps on. If he can't get one kill, he'll get another one. It's usually going to be a support and Kunkus down permanently. So is Sam H. But Cuckoo's managed to finish off Roger. He needed to kill FN too, but FN managed to make his escape. And now Cuckoo's got to deal with the Resolution, the big man, Horseman. Up up against her. Jesus Christ, what was that crit? Resolution just explodes the Queen of Pain. She's forced into a buyback. Comes back immediately, gets her vengeance. FN, he's back in town. Not a whole lot of man. Not a whole lot of HP, but maybe it's enough to bring down Raven and still make the escape. Makes a long jump away. Cuckoo, you've got to find him. He managed to get the kill. They knocked down four of Empire somehow, get it. some way. He's going to be able to get the Rampage, baby. Give it to him. Win or lose, Rampage for Cuckoo. Oh, my God. How did they... Oh, oh. I think that at that point in the game, isn't it worth it to just buy back and bot back in? Because you know that the Queen... Like, Cuckoo bought back, right? You kill him again. He's, I guess Raven had buyback too. Man, this is stressful. I was about Raven, to say, Ra Raven needs the buyback just to get, just to push out lanes. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, rampage or not, you're still in the same situation. You always will be in the same situation unless you take advantage of the fact that heroes are dead right now. He swapped up his items too. I really like what Raven did. He he said, look, just having the radiance is not enough. No. I gotta have something else to be able to kill the creeps faster just to get the waves out. Because if we're gonna turn this, we need to be able to to lane pressure. And this is. Kind of one of those situations where are they holding it so much just because of how hard Empire are going for the win? Or are they holding it because their lineup just really is that good in the late game? <laughs> I like this. 68 armor. I like a this physical a lot. damage resistance of 80%. I mean, there's even a Helm of the Dominator up on the Queen. Oh, that, I'm, I'm all about it. Get some Helm of Dominators going, man. Dude, he's got a Mega Creep. Yeah, get, get all the Megas you can. Start standing them in front of that Tier 4. Do not let that Tier 4 take any more damage from Creeps. Even that one swing of that Creep was real hurtful to my heart. Because I know Grant Grant hates it, but you've got healable damage on this Tier 4. Right? Absolutely. You can just protect it. It can go all the way back up to 600 HP, and you can really abuse the fact that you've got this plus 35 frost armor structure armor. This may be, and I don't want to jinx myself, but it's uh -huh. probably going to be one of the only games ever where this talent does something. Could be. This, this could be it, Cap. This could be Ice Frog sitting there waiting this whole time, just going, this is my time. You fools. You thought it was worthless, Cap. You didn't know why it existed, but it was for this game. I saw it all coming. He really did. Smoke up, wrap around. Team Empire again trying to hit right or left. This time it's going to be right with a double damage. Pop up on the smoke, hit the ward down, but can't quite jump onto a hero. And with the old scepter, they actually kill that double damage. So Empire 
You're not feeling as comfortable with this situation. After all, they don't have buyback on Zomba. It doesn't deter Caustic one bit. He immediately jumps onto Tim's, knows that this hero doesn't really have the buyback, and it's a huge injury with the boat, but he managed to survive through all of that one. Resolution catches 1437. Raven unable to save with the Song of Siren. Roger just goes straight for Raven, but his BKB actually runs out at that time. Resolution's gonna be stuck in the chakra and takes a lot of damage during that period of time. So does the illusion. He might actually run out of the guard, but no, he actually gets Sam H first. Goes for the tier four. It doesn't have frost armor. Boys, take it down. And X with the torrent dodge by the Ghoul Scepter Resolution. Oh, he has the Bloodthorn on him. He's in serious trouble. Now they can bring him down finally, but the BKB goes off. He managed to get a defensive force stat plus Glamour Cave. He gets away with a tier four, gets dropped. TNC are left with three heroes for 60 seconds and 90 seconds, respective of the Timber Saw and the Lich, but they're still gonna hold onto their throne, at least for now. Empire are going to give them that much. I wonder if, if it's worth it for Theban to just go back and buy a Ghost Scepter. Like, if he gets Reality Rifted and he's not, like, instantly Ghost or uh, instantly Glimmer Caving himself, he just dies. The throne's exposed here, Cat. This this could be the time Empire could finally put the nail in the coffin here. Ah, they're gonna go for Raven first. The BKB activated. FN wants to make sure he can get this damage in unimpeded, but Raven does manage oh to get saved. But Jesus, again, it happens. The physical damage is too much for the Queen of Pain. She's down for two minutes, and Empire will finally end this game. Raven, they stop him from being able to pop the Saga Siren, get him locked down for three seconds or more. There it is. Now two minutes down, and TNC are finally going to be forced out of this game too by Empire. They end it in a draw. My goodness. What a game. What a game. Props to Empire. And especially Roger making that comeback. FN having a phenomenal game despite starting off by getting first blooded. Giving the first blood gold to the Queen of Pain after getting three man ganked right by his bounty rune. Yeah. Just being so consistent throughout the entire match. Getting the farm he needed. Being in the fights. You know for a while TNC seemed like they had kind of this chokehold over the game with Raven getting farm and, and continually like getting his item progression, but Empire just never allowed him to get far enough ahead to really just keep TNC in the driver's seat. And eventually, off the back of a few fights, Empire managed to uh, secure the victory. It took a little while, almost 80 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, man. You put that W on the board, you're feeling good. Uh, especially as Empire, who have not been having the greatest win rate so far in their group stage. This certainly bolsters things quite a bit, especially since TNC had been doing pretty well for themselves with some ties against tough opponents. But that is it for this series. It's going to end up in a 1-1 between Empire and TNC. Next up, we're going to have Execration once again on this stream. This time, they're going to be facing up against Invictus Gaming.